children of God. Friends, will you rise in body or in spirit for our call to worship? In the presence of God, may prudence inform us. In the presence of God, may understanding empower us. May we speak in ways that are broader and wider than depraved strategies for ill gain. May we walk from light into light, also gaining wisdom from the darkness. From the darkness of our own mouths, may we speak of freedom and possibilities. Amen. Amen.
Thanks, you may be seated. Each week we engage an age-old discipline of confession whereby we turn again to ourselves, to all that we have been and are, and we lift up those things that are too heavy to carry on our own, those things that feel like mistakes, transgressions, and sins. We offer a prayer with one voice followed by the prayer for your own mind and heart, wherever we are. Let us pray together. God of regions, territories, space, and grace, we confess we have felt encroachment and even drawn lines in the sands of our days. We confess that we have encroached on others and hoped no one would notice. We confess a deep and fearful protectiveness of what is ours territories and possessions activate our adrenaline and cortisol how we long to do more than hold and conserve intensity how we long to live into a grace that requires space whether traveling from the east or west from the north of shy town towards southern mississippi grant us courage to see the world with the mind of christ in whose name we offer these prayers. Amen.
<laughs> There's perhaps no better sound than a baby enjoying its own voice in the room. Lift your own voice and share the peace of Christ with each other now. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. No, it's fine. Yeah. Babe. Peace of Christ. Peace. Yeah, what does it say of my heart? Let's get some light in this space. What is going on? Are you in are you a soprano today? As we continue greeting one another, let's uh, sing our children forward. You guys can be seated. Um, Chris, before you guys get started on Spirit Box, I don't know if Gretchen Hardy and Zvidlov Vlikowski is in, are in the room. They're our newest members, and I see um, the eyebrows. I'm going to help you pronounce. You're like, yeah, sure, you're going to help us pronounce. Um, listen, by action of your session, Last Monday night, Gretchen, and as he is affectionately called, Z, Z, joined the congregation. And in order to honor them, we'll be getting them their bread this week. But can you all say the name Gretchen? Gretchen. Hardy. Hardy. Now, that's an easy name, and you'll likely use it. Her husband's name is much more difficult, but I'm going to give you a little guidance on his name. Jeez love. Jeez love. So if you end in love, you're going to be fine. Jeez love. Jeez love. Jeez love. Jeez love. Jeez love. Vikowski. Vikowski. Oh no, it must have a lot more confidence on your face, Sherry Cragen. Vikowski. Jeez love, Vikowski. Jeez, love Vikowski. Welcome to Gretchen and Z. <clears throat> so today for our spirit box, Chris, are you grabbing the extra mic? I am. You bet your bottom oh, dollar. Good. So we actually um, have been graced by uh, Carl Hayes providing the spirit box for us. Am I correct? And Carl Hayes, your father was telling me this story this morning about one of the pieces in it. So I actually have some prior knowledge, which oh, I probably shouldn't. But come down here. So, first off, Chris, do you want to pull out the first thing in here? All right, here. Let's, let's come here so they can see you. Or, so, let's, you want to step out in the middle a little bit? I'm going to give this to you, Carl, okay? Can you hold this really close to your mouth like this? Great. Is it on? It should be. All right, Carl. The first thing, what is, what is this? What does this look like, y'all? Yeah, it looks pennies. like some. Is it just pennies, Lilith? I think it's a dime. Some dimes? Whose name is on there? Dimes. You guys got to shout it loud so they can hear you. Mike. Mike! You know how much, is, is, you said it was money. How much money is in there? 24 cents. Okay. 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 Now the second thing, okay, it's, it says Moana Jr. Okay. Is this a, like, it's a, my brother's high school. okay. So your brother's high school play. Okay. Can I see? Yeah. This is what it looks like, y'all. So is this the thing that when you go in and you go to the theater, yeah. 
that this is what they give you. It's like your bulletin. It's kind of like when we give people a bulletin. This is the bulletin we got. This is what it looks like, y'all. Oh, you we wanna were hold in that. the creek, and um, there was a Mike. Um, hold it real close to me. He was over there by the end of the creek, and my parents let me get um, a banana, and I gave it to him, and they gave me that money. So you had a banana, and Mike was next to the creek. Now, who's Mike? Mike was um, a guy that did not have any family. And Living in the creek for a bit. Oh my gosh. He left, he left and so you had a banana. So did y'all hear that? What did you say? So our friend Carl here, so he was walking along one day and he saw a friend named Mike. And Mike I didn't know him. You didn't know him though. No. But but did he become your friend after you gave him the banana? Yes. And so Carl you, walked over to Mike and you had a banana? Is that what you said? So Carl had a banana. Oh, and you gave that banana to Mike, and then he gave you this money. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh! What do you think, Parker? Now what? Now what do you? What do you? So I, I feel like you kind of have a, uh, you kind of save this. So what are you going to do with this money, if I can ask? Now what? Now what? What happens after the spirit box? Who knows? But I'm glad that you set it apart. I feel like sometimes when we do things that mean a lot to us, that we revere, that kind of well up inside of us, that have a meaning in some ways, sometimes we set them apart and we label them. Yeah, I love that. So this is special money, y'all, because Mike, it sounds like what you're saying, Carl, is Mike was a special person, even though you didn't know him. And so, you know, we all spend money probably every day, right? We go to the grocery store, we get a meal, we go to the movies. But we're probably not going to spend this money because this is special, holy money. Because the special guy, Mike, that you formed a relationship with him that day. You know, Carl, right, if there's one thing that I know about you, is that you have a way of just showing other people how beloved they are. And so whether that was Mike, and you walked up to Mike and you gave him a banana, or even if it's your brother, H.W., who I think is here, he's right over there. He's right over there. Is that you just know how to make your friends and your family feel like that they are made in the beloved image of God, because they are. That's an amazing thing, my friend. Don't stop sharing that gift with the world, okay? Okay? <laughs> Friends, let's stand. We're all going to stand. And if, you, if this is your first time here, we're going to teach you our prayer. Carl, do you want to lead it for us? So this is what we do, and this is for you too, congregation, is we go, God be in my head, God be in my heart, on my left and on my right, beneath me, above me, and in the faces of all who love me. Carl, start us off, all right? Head, God be in my heart. God be on my left. God be on my right. God be beneath me. God be above me. God be in the faces of all who love me, including Mike. Including Mike. Yes. All right, y'all. Thank you. Carl, thanks so much, Ben. <laughs> Keep the box. Such a warm uh, demonstration of stewardship, a great segue to invite Melissa Boss forward uh, to provide us a moment for stewardship from the stewardship committee. Melissa, thanks for being here. Hello, everyone. Uh, peace of Christ to you and also with you. Um, my husband couldn't be here today with me because he's working, uh, he's a physician, and so I'm here standing before you by myself, but that's okay. I'm used to it as a doctor's <laughs> wife. Um, my name is Melissa Boss, and the Stewardship Committee asked me to speak to the congregation about what First Presbyterian Church of Waco means to me. My husband and I moved to Waco in 1994, and shortly thereafter, we joined First Presbyterian for many years, we were led by Pastor Jimmy Johnson and for the last 10 years by Dr. Leslie King, two of the most talented and generous clergy I've ever known. We raised our three children in this church. When our kids were younger, the church was a place to help them learn about our Christian faith, to make friends and to find support from other adults. 
All three attended Sunday school, uh, Bible school, church picnics, Mo Ranch, and they all went through confirmation class with Miss Story and another church member who stood beside them throughout the year-long process. We attended many Christmases and Easter services in the sanctuary, celebrations that made lots of memories. We've also been through tough times here. I will always remember the packed sanctuary on the Sunday after 9-11. Everyone in the country was devastated, scared, and looking for community. We all found comfort here. We felt closer to God and closer to each other. It was a very difficult time for everyone, and First Presbyterian <clears throat> helped me and my family get through that hard time. Our children are grown now, and my attendance at church has not always been consistent. However, even during the times I drifted away from in-person fellowship, the knowledge that the church community is here for me has always given me comfort. The, the last couple of years have been particularly difficult because of the pandemic. I've been so impressed by the efforts that the church clergy, administration, elders, deacons, and lots of others have made to keep the church together and to be there for the congregation in so many ways when we're all feeling isolated and alone. Now that we're in a better place, it's time to get to work, rebuilding some of what we lost during the pandemic, and to look forward to building a renewed church that works for all of us during these rapidly changing times. While preparing my comments, I struggled with finding a scripture reading that expressed what the church means to me, but I felt sure that it would come to me at the right time. Well, I was right. While reading the morning paper on Friday, I was struck by an opinion piece by Blake Burleson, who's a member of the Tribune Herald Board of Contributors. He quoted Galatians 3.28, there is no longer Jew or Greek, there is no longer slave or free. There's no longer male and female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. That scripture definitely speaks to this congregation. We're all are welcome, no matter how we are different, we are all one before Christ. My reaction comes from the welcoming nature I've always experienced in this church, and how every time I walk through the front doors, I leave feeling better than I did when I arrived. So friends and con congregants of First Presbyterian, I say to you that First Presbyterian has been important in my life for many reasons at different times and always in a positive way. The definition of the word stewardship is to take care of something, such as an organization or property. Stewardship season calls us all to do what we can to support the church in every way, including financially. As we all know, it takes money to keep the lights on, the building in good shape, and pay the salaries of those that perform the duties that contribute to the day-to-day -day health of the congregation. I challenge each of you to think seriously about what First Presbyterian Waco means in your life and how you can support it both financially and through your other natural talents. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Melissa. Friends, would you bow your heads in prayer with me? God, your church is a strange place. It's a hodgepodge of saints and sinners. There are people in this room for whom church might be a place of refuge and solace. But there are also people, maybe even in this room, for whom church is a place that they only know as hurt and of pain. So I would...
Correct. Set on fire by hell. 
for every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species, but no one can tame the tongue. A restless evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth comes blessings and curses. My brothers and sisters, this ought not be true. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? In a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, you know, olives, or a grapevine figs, no more than salt water being fresh. Friends, an epistle for Christ's church. Maybe a little gurgling even, 
a quivering, maybe nausea. For some of us, the feeling arrives right here. For others of us, it lands more at the heart center. And the dis-ease radiates outward or wraps in and around. Still others experience in the throat, something gets caught, something chokes, tears are produced in the eyes, words are stuttered over. It is the line of wisdom that starts in our bodies, in our reaction to our experiences that ask the tongue to pause its impulse to say anything. But it's awkward. It's an awkward feeling to get message from the gut, from the heart, from the throat. And we have flirted with the idea that it is simply indigestion, heartburn, or acid. And most things can happen. But you will know when it is that you come up against the invitation of wisdom to slow down. Austin is going to be singing a bit of Dylan's song entitled, It's All Right, Ma, I'm Just Bleeding. And you should have the lyrics for that. God is at the break of noon, shadows even the silver spoon, the handmaid's blade, the child's balloon, eclipses both the sun and moon, to understand you know too soon there is no sense in trying, pointed threats they bluff with scorn, suicide remarks are torn, from the fool's gold mouthpiece the hollow horn, plays wasted words, proves to warn that he not busy being born is busy dying. He not busy being born is busy dying. A distillation of the Christian message. We project it onto Christ like Christ is an object, but the Christological invitation is that you and I would be micro perishing micro perishing throughout our existence that is dying to small things that have run their course that we may live to profound things that need boosting this line of wisdom from the gut to the throat is nothing like nothing less than a slow till of the soul's soil this wisdom line from gut to throat is nothing less than a slow till on the soil of the soul. Wherein all that has had its life and run its course, whether it's an idea or an opinion or a behavior, can get turned up and over. It is the spiritual discipline it is the spiritual discipline that has the potential to prevent violence. While preachers preach of evil fates, teachers teach that knowledge weighs and lead to hundred dollar plates. Goodness hides behind its gates, and even the President of the United States sometimes must have to stand naked. And though the rules of the road have been large, it's only people's game. You gotta dodge, and it's all right, Ma. I can make it. Can make it can persevere if we till the line when it agitates. 
days. That wisdom line from the gut to the throat that if it becomes spacious enough will make it to our mind and affect our tongue. There's a movie out about Emmett Till. And I was not entirely aware when I drafted this series that there would be a movie coming out when I titled the sermon Till and Tell. But Dylan had a song about Emmett Till. He gave his social capital to tell the story of the trial that he thought to be unjust. And in the song on Emmett Till, Dylan laments, slows down over the wisdom line, whether it's in his gut or his heart or his throat, that something wasn't right. Maybe Till Moberly is a focus of the movie for her motherhood in which she let wisdom's line from gut to throat rule her decision to expose her son's mutilated body as the body that belonged to everyone. Let them see what they have done to our son. And in the move, Mabry Till Moberly is an exemplar for us of sidestepping culture's cautions, sidestepping culture's cautions of should and ought, which on face value look like wisdom, but they are distractions and detours away from wisdom each and every time. Culture with no malice, I'll tell you, Culture with no malice suggests to you and I what should and ought to be done. And it is our work to run the midline of wisdom. In our moments, our unrepeatable moments given to us by God to make our response. While one who sings with his tongue on fire, gargled in the rat race choir, bent out of shape from society's pliers, cares not to come up any higher, but rather hit you down in the hole that he's in. But I mean no harm nor put fault on anyone that lives in a vault. But it's all right, Ma, if I can't please him. It's all right, Ma, if I can't please the one in the vault, the one that has locked over and away the very thing that should be furrowed and opened and flowed to the brain a new message of possibility and hope. The book of James is a book that says to you and me, belief and behavior are bundled. It is only your experience and mine, the experience that other people allow us into, that can inform and modify the behavior that we must give back out to the world in Christ's name. The book of James said, faith without works is dead. Proverbs says, listen to wisdom. That requires the vulnerability of standing naked, the temptation to vault ourselves and do what we should or ought. But we are always just one decision away from the uneasy stomach, the tight heart, the clogged throat, to the speech of wisdom that intends to listen, to learn, and behave in a way that calls. 
calms and strengthens our bodies. The flowers this morning are given by the late Charles Campbell during the time when he was alive to his late wife, Geneva. Today, Charles Campbell's innocent cure. Both This is not just life. These rules. Our life is just life pushing through our forms and trying in all the ways to release us from the form to the greater experience of life above it. So listen to your gut. Breathe into your heart and choke on those words. Let the tongue rest. Let wisdom soar. It's all right. It'll only cost us all of our energy and life. Amen. Continents, cultures, country. 
countries, cities, neighborhoods, homes. Grant us strength, indeed, the internal level, to be your people of vibrancy, of hope, of strength. And when our eyes look upon the world, may they share such filtered light as these windows. Seeing not as the world sees, but seeing with the mind of Christ, who taught us together to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine 